Hi, it's Rob Moore here. 10 weird signs that you are definitely an entrepreneur to know that you're not alone and you're going down the right path. Now, before I share these 10 weird entrepreneurial traits, uh, a lot of people have been saying to me that I don't really share much about our, what I do in my personal life. Now, of course, there's plenty of things you don't want to know uh, about my personal life, um, but I am going to endeavour to share more of what I'm doing behind the scenes of the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast and uh, kind of the public stuff I post. And so one of those is that um, I was inv invited by um, someone who's become quite a good friend of mine, actually, and that's uh, uh, Jake Wood, who plays Max the Baddie in EastEnders. Um, we've been speaking to each other every few weeks on the phone, and he runs a brilliant event with his good friend, European boxing champion, Sky Sports commentator, Spencer Oliver. They run Boxing with the Stars, which they've been doing four years in a row. It's a charity event. They must have had 250 people, something like that. It was a brilliant event. Anyway, about 45 um, of my progressive community and podcast listeners came down with me. Um, I bought five tables and everyone chipped in a little bit. And, um, we went down and it was a brilliant, brilliant night. We had a great time. You'll probably be, see um, lots of pictures and lots of people posting about it in the Disruptive Entrepreneur community. And, you know, if you follow me on Facebook... Uh, it, w it was a really good event. And now for years, I um, used to go to a lot of charity events. Um, but then I suppose when I had more of a public profile online and I was leveraging more podcasting and videoing, I've kind of become a bit of an introvert over the last few years because I can, I can use this leverage, can't I, to get out to more people. So I'm trying to force myself to get out there and socialise a bit more because I can be a bit awkward socially. Uh, but it was a great time and I'm planning to go back each year uh, I'm actually going to see Jake and Spencer in a couple of weeks. I'm doing a podcast with both of them. Uh, that'll be a very new concept, so you should enjoy that. Um, so, all right, here we go. Yes, this is take two. Yes, I did mess up the first version. Thanks for reminding me. Ten, perhaps weird signs. You are an entrepreneur and you're not alone. So the first one is overwhelm. Now, um, I don't know a, a true entrepreneur that's not overwhelmed. If you're not overwhelmed, you're not doing enough. If you're organised and prioritised and everything is just perfectly aligned and your ducks are in a row, uh, you're not an entrepreneur because you're not doing enough, you're not pushing enough. Now, many of us see overwhelm as a, a bad thing, um, but it's a first world problem. Uh, and, you know, if you're not taking on a little bit more than you can handle, you're not growing. You're clearly not um, pushing yourself to get that resourcefulness and creativity and, you know, get out of that state of comfort. So, you know, overwhelm is not such a bad thing. Just make sure it doesn't completely melt you down so you just freeze. So it's pretty normal. It's just how, how much can you deal with? I mean, if you imagine someone like Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, he was always pretty prolific as a business person. If you read about him, he used to book um, di uh, diary appointments, you know, by the five minutes. And he'd ha almost have a switchboard via his PA to phone. She'd have people on the fo phone waiting for him. He'd be speaking. He'd put the phone down. She'd put them through. He'd put the phone down. She'd put them through. And he could get through lots and lots of calls because being very efficient uh, with his time. So, you know, having a little bit too much to do um, and, and, and you being someone as an entrepreneur, a visionary, someone who wants to make a difference, that is where you're in maximum productivity. Um, just don't let it get out of control. Okay, so the second thing, a sign that you are definitely an entrepreneur, is you see opportunity in everything and you can't help it. Now, the downside of this is, you know, you're spinning too many plates, you're, you're trying to monetize everything, you know, you're, you hear multiple streams of income and you take that as, well, I'm going to do 58 different things. Um, but, you know, I've got a good friend who's a dentist and he's just getting into cosmetics. And I so want to be in that business just because I can see the opportunity. I can see the opportunity in VR. I can see the opportunity in 3D printing. I can see that in property, the conveyancing process needs uh, disrupting. And it's like, ah, oh, see opportunity in everything. Every, everywhere you walk, it's like a business opportunity. That's because that's how you think. That's a good thing. Uh, but of course, again, you need to balance that like you do with the overwhelm where not trying to literally turn everything into money making idea. I recently printed a few disruptive T-shirts just for a bit of fun. And a lot of people have been, well, Rob, you know, you should be selling merch. And I'm thinking, oh, I could create this merchandising business. No, that's not what I do. Um, OK, the third thing then, uh, if it's a sign you're an entrepreneur, is you feel alone sometimes. And I definitely feel alone sometimes. Sometimes I feel like... Um, everyone's telling me I'm crazy. You know, that there aren't that many people out there that are like me. Um, sometimes I feel like it can be a strain on some relationships. I was having a chat with someone at this 
um, charity ball yesterday and she was saying it's really hard to pin down a relationship because I'm working all the time and um, some of the men I've met don't really understand that or, you know, they're... They just, they just think I'm a bit mad. Why don't I have a normal job and, and do normal things and have a normal life? Um, sometimes you can feel that people are holding you back if they're maybe a bit negative or critical or um, sometimes people are just trying to help you by saying, oh, that's a bit of a scheme or oh, that's not going to work or oh, don't take any risks. Um, but, you know, like in my role in Progressive, usually I've got to solve a lot of the problems um, and I feel like sometimes I have to solve them on my own and protect my staff, my c community from them. And, and that can sometimes feel lonely. And that's normal. Uh, and you just have to make sure you leverage the disruptive entrepreneur community. If you're listening to the podcast, which I'm recording here, or the live video, make sure you're in the disruptive entrepreneur community. Uh, and it's OK to feel alone every now and again. You know, we're, we're, we're not like most people as entrepreneurs. We're different. I mean, you know, most people are employed. It must be a 95-5 um, employer to an employee ratio, I would guess. Um, but just make sure you reach out and have, you know, it's really important for me to a good amount of times per week be around cool, interesting, inspiring people, having mentors, um, doing things with my community where I'm around a lot of people who are going through the same as me. Because if there's one thing I've learned from helping hundreds of thousands of people in the last, what, 12 years is a lot of people think that what they're going through, they're going through alone. But what you're going through as an entrepreneur, every entrepreneur goes through, it is completely normal. Comparing yourself to others, feeling it should be faster, feeling like you're not doing well enough. Um, you know, we all feel that. Uh, you know, the imposter syndrome, you know, the overwhelm, the frustration, trying to challenge, you know, juggle loads of things, you know, trying to be a mom and a good husband or wife and a good parent and trying to do your business on the side and you're trying to keep everyone happy, but maybe not keeping everyone happy. You putting yourself last, paying everyone else first. This is all just what it's about. Now, I don't want to, to paint a, a gloomy picture because being an entrepreneur and a property investor has changed my life. And, um, you know, everything great in my life has come from running a business. Um, but, you know, it's also good to have a bit of a, a dose of reality. OK, the fourth thing, and I feel like this a lot, and this is just... Mm, I'm just going to say how it is. I won't pre-frame it. Um, I sometimes think it's quite a thankless task being an entrepreneur. Like it can be a thankless task being a parent. You know, you've got to provide this for your customers. You've got to provide this for your staff. You've got to, you know, you've got to pay all your outsources. You've got to pay everyone. You know, you, and, um, you know, and often where's the thanks for you for the great and meaningful work that you do? Um, yeah, you know, sometimes you have to go and clear everyone's mess up. Sometimes you pay and hire people and they don't do the right job and you have to go and fix it and you have to pay them. Sometimes you have to take all the flack. You're the one that gets the critics, trolls and haters. Uh, and the reality is, if you're in that position, you have the most value and you, you are in a more of a leadership role and others are inspired by you and protected by you. So, you know, whilst you might not get thanks 58, 60 times a day, um, it doesn't mean that people don't appreciate you. And I have to remember that when I feel somewhat unloved. I have to remember that there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across the planet um, who listen to my podcast and follow my work and probably are quite grateful for what I do. And, and you know, here's the thing on the reverse of that, because I see this with my staff, because sometimes, you know, like basically I see my job as walking around trying to give love to everyone in the, uh, in the office, you know, make them feel good, pick up on things they do well. And sometimes I, there's certain people I think that like I give lots of compliments to and tell them what they're really good at and lift them up and not just sort of vacuous ones, but real ones that I believe that are specific and yet they still don't hear that. And then if you ever give them one piece of critical advice, that's what they hear. Um, but it's funny because I can sometimes feel like that. I get dozens of messages a day of people thanking me for, for what I've done. Um, and you can sometimes take that for granted. OK, the fifth thing that is a sign, definite sign that you're a weird entrepreneur is you beat yourself up. You compare yourself to others. Um, you know, it's never enough. It's never good enough. You're never enough. You should be further down the line. It's not happening quick enough. Why isn't it happening? What's wrong with you? Why aren't you doing better? Um, I, for me, that's huge. Uh, I have that a lot. It's funny, I was just thinking about that because I've done now about 3,000 speeches. Um, I don't know what I've sold and how many times I've sold it, but I've probably sold about 85 million pounds worth of products. Um, yet every time I do a keynote speech or every time I do cut some kind of sales pitch, I'm like, what if this is going to be the time where it really bombs and no one wants it? And what if this is the time where I stand on stage and everyone just walks out or boos me? 
Um, it, you know, when I write my books and launch them, what if this is the book that flops and no one wants to buy and everyone criticises? I don't know why I do that to myself. It's like I've got enough proof now. Um, fair enough when you're starting out, starting out, you know, when you haven't got the proof. But, you know, I just want to let you know that for many of us, that doesn't go away. That, and in a way, that's good because that drives us. Um, because if we didn't have that slight fear... Um, it probably wouldn't force us to push through our comfort zones. It, it makes us study. It makes us research. It makes us say and do things carefully, build good, meaningful products, solve our clients' problems. Because, um, you know, if we didn't have that fear, we wouldn't care. We'd just go out and do whatever we wanted. And that would probably be a problem. Um, but, you know, you should pat yourself on the back a lot more than you do. I, and this is, this is therapy for me as it is for anybody else. You don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. You are completely different and unique to anyone else. Um, and while, well, yeah, we all want to strive for more growth, contribution, progress, achievement. They're all things that most human beings, if not all, strive for. You are enough now. Who you are is good enough. There is nothing wrong with you. Um, and it's worth every now and again just patting yourself on the back and going, hey, you know what? I did pretty good today. I didn't lose my call. Um, I helped people. You know, because look, at the end of the day, um, I should think on a daily basis, I could quite easily just lose my shit. Uh, and I'm sure you could. And I'm sure people and things push you on a daily basis. So every day you don't lose your shit and you think before you speak uh, and you listen um, to, and care to help and serve others, you know, before you go blaming, defending, complaining or justifying. Every day you do that. Every day you don't punch your kids in the face. Uh, is a good day. So, you know, every time you beat yourself down, at least do yourself the courtesy of, of lifting yourself up too. Um, the next thing I think that is definitely a sign you're an entrepreneur is that you feel you're destined for greatness. I can't tell you specifically in words or vision what it is I feel like um, is special or great or unique about me. But I have a feeling inside that I'm destined for more than I'm doing. I'm supposed to be bigger and contribute more and give more and grow more than I am. And, you know, of course, there's that wrestle, isn't it, within feeling like you're not enough and comparing yourselves to others. Um, and, and, you know, it's not so much an ego thing anymore. It may have been. And sometimes the ego is good because it drives you to progress. Um, but there's just like I don't know a, pro a true entrepreneur who hasn't got this feeling inside of them of, you know, I'm not saying that we are, you know, we're destined for greatness, but I'm saying we're destined for more. And, you know, there's so much more for us to do, to achieve, to contribute. And sometimes you can't even articulate it. I'm even having, I'm even struggling articulating, uh, articulating how to articulate it or even how to talk. Um, but this is just a feeling you've got and you know it and you're clear about it. And sometimes you don't know what business model it's got to go down or you don't even know if you're going down the right path. But you know inside of you, you're meant to be more. Um, and, you know, that's a gift we need to give to the world and ourselves. The seventh thing I think is a sign that you're an entrepreneur is that you know you need to and you want to serve others equally as well as meeting your own selfish interests. So I think the ideal balance uh, of growth um, and a balance of self-worth and net worth is that, that border between selflessness and selfishness. It's OK to be selfish to put your kids through private school and buy a nice house and get a, a nice environment where you're comfortable, where you can be yourself and clothe yourself well to feel confident and buy yourself some nice things and go on some nice holidays so you can relax well um, and invest in your education and knowledge so you can grow. You're allowed to meet those selfish needs for you and your family. But if you just do that and don't help anybody, um, then society will rebel against you. Um, so help, give, serve more and have the fair exchange environment where you're charging fairly, where you can make a good sustainable profit margin and then you can reinvest some of that profit into growing and, you know, achieving that greatness that's within you. Uh, number eight then is um, if, you, if you don't do this, you're definitely not an entrepreneur and that's embracing sales and marketing um, because nothing moves until someone sells something. Now, let's imagine that your business is a shop and the shop is an analogy really for any business online, offline. You know, if you sell a product, a service, an idea, then there's some kind of shop front real or imagined. So the shop. OK, so you can spend 
hundreds of thousands of pounds fitting out the shop, making it look beautiful. You can get the, the latest technology of payment systems and all that kind of stuff. And you can even make the window beautiful and you can dress the window with art and make it look amazing. And you could be the, the best cashier uh, and, and sales clerk in the whole shop. Um, you're brilliant at upselling and cross-selling. I bought a Tom Ford suit for my birthday. I love Tom Ford suits. And I went in there for, uh, no, not for my birthday, for my wedding. I went in there for a wedding suit and I came out with extra shirts and extra shoes and, you know, all these things I didn't necessarily need because the guy in the shop was really good at his job. Um, but marketing is getting someone in the shop in the first place. And if you can't get anyone in the shop, one, and then when they're in the shop, sell them stuff, and then when they're buying stuff, sell more stuff, you don't have a business. And nothing moves until someone sells. Uh, and, you know, a lot of us get into business some way. Like I got into art when I was an artist because we have a passion for a product or a service or an idea. You know, we, we have a, a love of something that we want to create. That's fine. But it ain't a business until you learn to and embrace that selling is needed, selling OK, selling is good, selling is caring, as long as it's in a fair exchange environment. Now, when it's in a fair exchange environment, I, you charge fairly and there's good profit margins and your self-worth increases because of it. But they perceive that they get a bargain because what you give is equal or more than the value than they paid. That's the fair exchange environment where their gratitude goes up, your self-worth goes up and everything compounds. Um, and in, when you've got that environment right, and that'll need some testing, perhaps price elasticity and uh, getting feedback from your clients, etc. Um, then you kind of get over yourself and you don't fear so much about sales and marketing. But there's so many great producers, creators, um, and, you know, and people, and coaches, trainers, consultants who have spent tens of thousands on their education, and their knowledge, and they're really good at what they do. And they're terrible at sales and marketing and they don't have a business. So you must embrace sales and marketing if you want to be a true entrepreneur. The ninth thing, then, um, that is a sign that you're an entrepreneur, perhaps a bit weird, um, is you hate, you hate being told what to do. I cannot stand being told what to do. Uh, yeah, I just can't. Uh, and I've had to learn to go, yeah, because, you know, I, I want to stay in my marriage uh, and I don't want to put my children up for adoption. Um, but yeah, it's, I really don't like being told what to do. I'm very much a contrarian, very much a rebel, very much feel like I want to make decisions and have autonomy and freedom of choice. My business partner, he's exactly the same. In fact, he's probably even more so. Him and I had to relearn how to give instructions, especially like when you, we have about 80 staff that work in um, you know, our three main companies. And it's like, you know, you know when you've got a good relationship with your staff that they start bossing you around like you're their employee. And at first I found that really hard. Well, you didn't tell me what to do. I run the company. But of course, I'm not, below, I'm not above or below them. They're not below or above me. We are all a team and we're all necessary in that team. So I had to relearn how to deal with being told what to do. And when I get told what to do now and I have no intention of doing it, um, or I don't like being told, I'll just smile and nod and then kind of float away somewhere. Um, but that's OK. Being a contrarian, going against the masses. At the end of the day, there are more consumers than producers. Uh, there are more entrepreneurs than employees. Um, I don't look down on anyone, whether you're entrepreneur, entrepreneur or employee. It makes no difference. You know, you could be an employee. I mean, Tim Cook is an employee and, of Apple uh, and they're huge, huge, huge. Um, but yeah, you know what? Most people who work for themselves don't like being told what to do. Uh, and then 10 is you embrace risk. So, you know, you, you don't wilt. Um, you take some risks. I'm not saying they're not calculated. Uh, but you embrace taking risks, getting yourself out of your comfort zone, doing things that are a little bit scary, um, because if you don't, then, you know, I think it was Ray Kroc who said, if you're green, you grow. And if you're ripe, you rot. Uh, and I think it's me that says, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. So let me sum up then these 10 signs, some of them weird, that you are an entrepreneur. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. One, you feel overwhelmed all the time, but that fine line between having not enough to do and too much to do is overwhelming in the middle, but that's productivity. And, you know, like, it's funny because sometimes I'm like, I've got too much things, too much, too much to do. I hate it. Everyone leave me alone. But just... 2% less and I love it and I'm on a roll and I like being busy and getting stuff done. The second thing is you see opportunity in everything, you can't help it. It's just there, you walk down a shopping center and you just see commerce and you just see opportunity everywhere. The third thing is you can feel alone from time to time. Everyone's telling you you're crazy, you find relationships hard to hold down, you feel that people are holding you back. 
Fourth, it, fourth is sometimes you feel it's a thankless task. Who's thanking you? Who's helping you? Who's supporting you? Because ultimately you're at the top of the tree. Fifth, you beat yourself up a lot. You compare yourself to others. You and it are never enough. You need to pat yourself on the back from time to time. Six, you know you're destined for more, maybe even for greatness. It's a feeling. You can't always articulate it. Seventh is you balance serving your selfish needs with the selfless acts of helping other people. Um, when you get that balance right, you grow, you grow, you grow. And of course, you make more money from, for yourself too. Um, eight is you absolutely embrace it and learn how to get good at sales and marketing, no matter how scared you are of it in the early days. Nine is you hate being told what to do because you're often a contrarian. And ten, you embrace and you, you, you gently increase your risk and your risk threshold. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Um, if you're watching live or you're watching the recording of the video, uh, this will be on the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast and we have well over 300 um, episodes. And I just want to let you know coming up, we've got some amazing guests, another billionaire coming up. Um, I remember reading a great book called How to Be a Billionaire in 2008 and it was a real mind opener for me and I managed to track down the author who's gone a bit underground who wrote How to Be a Billionaire and I'll be interviewing him soon. I'm interviewing Joe Malone very soon, who obviously the famous uh, perfume, perfumery, perfume house, whatever you'd call it, uh, and lots of many other amazing guests. I don't know if you've seen JP Sears, who's got the long ginger hair, who does all the parody videos, um, all the spoofs of entrepreneurs and the spiritualists and that kind of thing. I'm interviewing him. David Coulthard is coming up soon, the ex-Formula One driver. Um, I'm sure I've forgotten some other great guests and I know we've got lots of discussions in, in the pipeline too. So many exciting guests coming up. So uh, probably once a week now for six or eight weeks, you're going to get these um, interviews going live on the Disruptive Entrepreneur Podcast. So if you're watching it and you haven't subscribed, it's just the Disruptive Entrepreneur Podcast anywhere on iTunes or Stitcher. And if you listen and you get benefit out of the podcast, please could you leave a review? Now, if you leave a review on um, iTunes or Stitcher, uh, then um, let me know, sh just publish, um, share that you've left a review and I have a special gift I would like to give you. Um, so yeah, if you leave a review, I'll be very grateful to you and just let me know that you've done it. All right, thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. <laughs>